Hey there, so what I have in front of me right here is one of the best deals that I've seen for a laptop in a good little while. From Walmart right now, you can pick up this HP Victus for $600, and this is rocking an RTX 4050 with a Ryzen 5 8645HS and a 144Hz IPS display. One of the biggest caveats of this system, though, is that it only has 8GB of RAM. Now, luckily, this is a chassis that actually lets you open it up and upgrade your memory. Of course, this is $600 as it is without even including sales tax. So for about $30 to $50 more, you can get another 8 gigabyte stick and get this to 16. But I would really recommend that you consider going down the route of 32 gigabytes of RAM. If we actually take it out and look at the design, it's actually a very attractive laptop for its price point. See, a lot of manufacturers have been gay keeping good designs that didn't look horrendously gamer at higher price tiers and at the low tier you usually end up with these really gaudy monstrosities this is not it at all this is a very well put together computer it looks really nice it is using plastic all around I am not a big fan of the hinge here. The system did arrive dead, so we're gonna have to plug it in. All right, so I'm running through the first time setup, and one thing that I do appreciate is actually the fact that the keyboard feels really nice to use so far. And I do also appreciate the inclusion of the number pad that's really helpful because there's a lot of games that actually map keys to those, and if you don't have those, then you kind of end up in a pretty rough situation where you have to remap a lot of things. Before we actually look at the performance of this system though, I do want to take a look at more of the body because it is, as I said before, a very, very nice sleek design that is a lot more stealth in terms of branding. You have a very simple logo here. You do have Victus written at the bottom here, but it is nice and stylish. And the only HP branding is actually just here in this corner. So in general, it doesn't have a very loud design. It's not going to do anything intense. And because of that, it does make it less embarrassing to carry this around anywhere. But the main problem of this system so far is, is just those 8 gigabytes of RAM. Though if I'm going to also point out other issues, this screen itself is a little washed out. It doesn't really seem to be all that color accurate at all. It also doesn't get very bright, but it is a 144 hertz IPS display. So I would rather have the higher refresh rate than a more color accurate display for something like this. But let's jump in and actually take a look at the software so the first game that i wanted to test out is ghost of tsushima and here you can see it running with the high graphic settings and we are using dlss at the quality preset really the biggest advantage of going with something like the 4050 is the fact that you do get access to dlss and also you do get access to frame generation that is only available on the 4000 series unfortunately for this system frame generation doesn't really help all that much the main reason being is that even if i enable frame generation and the 1% lows don't really improve and it doesn't solve one of the fundamental problems. The game keeps randomly crashing for me and it's because we just have so little memory. At random points I'll just be traveling around the map or just in the middle of a fight and suddenly it'll crash to desktop. I did also try out Lords of the Fallen and for this one I just kept everything to auto since the game kind of really tries to insist that you leave things alone. From looking at the settings though it's mostly a mixture of low settings with with something set to medium. But I really couldn't complain too much considering that this is pretty decent levels of performance. The game actually didn't even enable DLSS. And by the looks of it, it didn't really need it. Now, if I needed to turn up the graphics settings, sure. But personally, I didn't really find the need for that while playing the game. And I was kind of just happy that it was running this well with the 1% lows as high as they were that I really didn't want to push things too much because the eight gigabytes of RAM was really a worry considering that with Ghost of Tsushima, we we were just getting crash after crash. So overall, I call this one a win. Now, I also did try out Counter-Strike 2 on this system, and this was one of the ones that was the most surprising to me. I was kind of expecting better performance than this, specifically in those 1% lows, but even the averages aren't looking great. Considering we have a full-size dedicated graphics card in here, I'm kind of shocked that we're barely getting an above 100 FPS average, and the fact that our 1% lows are even below 60 at all. And I really just don't think that this is the CPU's fault. You're going to see that in a lot of these games, the GPU is not being maxed out, and obviously neither is the CPU since this is a 6-core 12-thread CPU. Pretty 
pretty much no game is going to use all of that. But the individuals that are cores themselves are being maxed out. But I don't think that that's the limiting factor here. I think that the RAM is actually becoming a problem here. Because the system itself doesn't really seem to be all that stressed out. And I mean, here we're getting the levels of performance that you would kind of expect from like a mini PC. It's pretty unfortunate, but this is one of the ones that I'm going to look forward to the most once we actually upgrade the memory in here. So another game that I decided to give a try on here is Helldivers 2, especially since it recently got a new major update. Unfortunately, this was the first title to really show some problems on here. The footage you're looking at right here is with what the game defaulted to, which is a mixture of some medium and high settings. But after trying practically all the graphics presets, they all kind of ended up being very similar to each other, which isn't surprising because again, if you look at the GPU here, it's not even at 50% load in some scenarios. So there's a pretty major bottleneck happening here that is making the entire experience just a disaster disaster specifically in the one percent lows we could get the fps average to get slightly higher the medium graphics ended up giving me an extra five fps on the average but the one percent lows were effectively identical so you really couldn't tell a difference so i'm definitely interested to see how this one's going to do with 32 gigabytes of ram because this is surprisingly bad levels of performance i also wanted to try out returnal on here just to see what we could actually get on a heavy game like this and running with the high in-game graphics settings and we are using fsr at the quality preset or rather dlss not fsr but with these settings we actually get some pretty decent levels of performance and this actually ends up being a surprising dub considering that i was really expecting this to be a disaster with just eight gigabytes of ram so it does seem like there are quite a few titles that will work pretty well with only eight gigabytes of ram but you have to only be doing this you cannot have a web browser open. You cannot have anything really running in the background because that increases the likelihood that you will run into crashes. Returnal was actually another game that ended up giving me some crashes. Unfortunately, I didn't get that on video, but in one of the loops that I was doing running this benchmark, just trying to figure out what settings would be good to try out, it actually did end up crashing on me. And I suspect that this has to do with the eight gigabytes of RAM because this game, even when it's only giving single digit levels of performance, has not crashed on many PCs that have 16 gigabytes of RAM or more. And I think that's kind of what makes this such a perplexing system to recommend or not. It has a lot of the usual flaws that we see in budget gaming laptops, where the quality of materials that are being used aren't exactly the highest end, though this does feel a lot better than the vast majority of budget gaming laptops that I've tried before, and aesthetically it is more pleasing, but the hinge design is worrisome. Historically speaking, a lot of laptops that have this type of hinge design don't necessarily age well. Personally, I'm just not a fan and HP is not exactly a company that I trust with budget products. I barely trust them with premium products. But something this low end and this aggressively priced would have me a bit concerned. That said, it's undeniable that it is a fantastic price right now. Especially considering the fact that this is an upgradable system. See, let me show you something. This right here is the ZenBook 14. I ended up picking up this system a few months back because I saw them being sold refurbished on eBay for $400. What makes this interesting is the fact that it comes with a 14 inch OLED. And because of that, this system here can support HDR. And it's also a 16 by 10 display. In all regards, this is an incredibly beautiful display. And the build quality of the laptop itself also goes really well with the display. It feels really solid. It's super well built. It's a lot better than most budget laptops you'll find on the market out there. But the big problem of this system is that it only has eight gigabytes of RAM. The exact same problem that we have with the HP Victus here. The main difference though, is that this system has soldered memory. So I can't upgrade those eight gigabytes. It will forever only have eight gigabytes of RAM. So this beautiful OLED display will forever only be tied to a system that only has 8 
gigabytes of RAM. Now I use this laptop almost every day, specifically because this is just great for watching videos, but that's about it. I really can't do much of anything else. I can't edit YouTube videos on it. I can't sit there and game on it. And because of that, it's extremely limited. At $400, I'm willing to pay that price because it's really just what I'm paying for the display and a functional computer to go along with it. But the HP Victus here is a different story. It suffers a lot of the same problems where the eight gigabytes of RAM is just extremely limiting in 2024. It's gonna cause issues if you're trying to do anything but use this for a basic computer. And if you just want a basic computer, this is not what you buy. Because this thing, one of the, the biggest downsides that it has is that it weighs almost eight pounds. It's an extremely heavy system and you notice it. It's been a while since I've actually carried around a gaming laptop on a daily basis. All of the laptops that I've used over the last three years have been pretty lightweight, compact system. So getting a gaming laptop again and feeling just how heavy it is, it's really noticeable. If you're looking for a computer that you're going to lug around at school, really consider whether or not the gaming performance is going to make it worthwhile. You can find far more compact and even far more powerful gaming laptops, but keep in mind you're going to really be dealing with a lot of noise, a lot of heat, and a high price tag. If you're looking for something in the $600 price range, this isn't bad, but keep in mind that you're realistically going to be spending another $60 to $80 at least as of right now to get 32 gigabytes in there and i recommend you go 32 gigabytes i know you could buy another 8 gigabyte stick and just throw it in there but if you're gonna be opening this thing up anyway if you're gonna be throwing new parts in there you might as well make it something that'll last longer 32 gigabytes 64 gigabytes even 96 gigabytes if you want to go crazy with it but i just think that 16 is just not worth it anymore you might also consider upgrading the ssd in there considering that this is only a 512 gigabyte ssd and that means means it is extremely limited for holding any kind of games in there that aren't just going to be indie games. There are refurbished deals to be had out there if you want to get something with a 4060. And in all honesty, if you can splurge the extra 100 to $200 for that, I would go down that route. When it comes to laptops, I feel like if you are just within reach of going up a tier in terms of graphics, it's usually worth doing it. So if you're willing to shell out an extra couple hundred dollars, you can get systems with the 4060. And a lot of them also come with 16 gigabytes of RAM out of the box, which would make it an overall better experience than this just initially out of the box. But keep in mind that this is upgradable. You can claw back a lot of that performance loss, but you'll never be able to make up for the fact that this is a 4050 versus say a system that has a 4060 in it. So definitely take that into consideration, but honestly, I was surprised by the amount of games that were actually running on here. And I suspect that if we upgrade the RAM on here, that's just going to open up this to an even bigger world of games. Definitely helps that it's a 1080p screen. But for the next video, we're going to be taking a look at this thing running a bunch of games with just eight gigabytes of RAM and then upgraded to at least 32. I'm kind of thinking about throwing the 96 gigabytes of RAM in here, but I'll have to see. Let me know down below if you are interested in seeing this thing with 96 gigabytes of RAM. But anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next one.